recording, but that's what it is. Okay, so here we are, 6-6 six, six again. Uh, I told you guys earlier, this is the end of chapter chapter 6. This section is all word problems, and uh, let's go over them. Uh, this first example is a pretty good example. Um, it says, Miss Watson is make, mixing green paint uh, for her art class. She combines full bottles of blue, yellow, and white paint. And it says, how many eight fluid ounces um, can she fill? So uh, there's some information we need, and the information is on the bottles. It's not in what's written there. And so um, how would she figure that out? Take a look at the example. I mean, they walk you through it. How would she figure that out? How many eight fluid ounces? ounce jars can she fill anybody have any idea take a look at it yeah it might be a good idea to open the book no mr. Cosgrove any idea no okay so um, you're going to add them all up. And then what? After you have that number, after you add them up, what would you do, Miss Noble? Divide. Yeah, divide by what? I heard somebody whisper it. You would divide by eight because you're filling up the eight fluid ounce jars. So you're going to add them up and divide by eight. And that would tell you, okay? And, and so if you did that, and you can see that they did it right there, the answer is going to be 11.7. So here's my question. Think about this. Um, how many 8 fluid ounce jars can she fill up? Raise your hand if you think you know the answer. I see two hands. Three hands. Miss Rieger, what do you think? 11. Yeah, 11. Okay. She can't do 12 because it's 11.7. It's There's not enough for full, you know, 12 jars. So 11 jars is what she could fill. All right. So down at the convince me, it says Miss Watson is mixing 34.6 fluid ounces of red paint and... Uh, 18.2 fluid ounces of yellow and she's using this to make orange paint and it says how many 12 fluid ounce jars can she fill I do want you to answer that question you'll have to think about that guided practice it says Miranda mixed 34.5 fluid ounces of blue paint 40.5 fluid ounces of red paint and two fluid ounces of black paint to make purple paint. She poured the same amount of purple paint into each of the 14 jars. How much paint did she pour in each jar? Well, we don't know how big the jars are. But we do know there's 14 of them. So after you add it up, the amounts, what would you divide by? Mr. Gisa? 14. 14. Okay. So number one there, it says explain what each of the quantities in the problem means. So um, the quantities are all these, these four things that I just underlined right there. It's kind of a no-brainer. 34.5 is the blue paint. And so you could write that down. I'll do that first part for you here. 34.5, I'll just put OZ, um, equals blue paint. And then you would list everything else. Number two, it says describe one way to solve the problem. I'm not worried about number two. You can scratch that out. Because number three says, what's the solution to the problem? So, 
tell me what the solution is. And I want to see your work, you know, on the page there. Do the work. I want to see that. I don't want to just see the answer. Independent practice. Sue made chicken soup by combining the entire can of soup. And so let me pull a stick here. Uh, Mr. Graham, uh, don't sharpen your pencil now. Mr. Graham, um, what is the total ounces of soup? Ten. No. That's part of the question. It says, how many 10 fluid ounce bowls can she fill with the soup? But I actually didn't finish reading the question. Mr. Eberhard, you got your hand up. Uh, 18.6. Yeah, it's right here. It's right below the can. Okay. And so it says she combined the entire can of soup with a full can of water. So in other words, she emptied the can. You've probably seen your parents do this. They'll open up a can. They'll pour it in the pot. And they'll stick it under the sink. And they'll turn on the faucet. They'll fill it up with water. And they'll pour in another can of water. And often that's what people do to make soup. So you're doing this twice right here. Fill that up twice. Um, so it says how much soup will be left over because it's, it asks how many 10 fluid ounce bowls can she fill? Okay, so here's a bowl. Okay, it's 10 fluid ounces. So how much soup... I mean, if she was to fill up each one of these bowls, how many bowls could she fill up? All right. Um, and then explain what each of the quantities in the problem means. Well, just like the one above, they give you this quantity here and they give you this quantity here. That's really the only two quantities we're dealing with. So you would just describe each one, Ms. Ramirez. Okay. Um, describe one way to solve the problem. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. Again, uh, number six, what's the solution to the problem? Explain it. That's kind of the same thing, what you'd be doing in number five. All right, and there's more than one way to solve this problem. Okay. And then finally, the problem solving, the next page, the performance task, it says, is that Lucas? Lucas. Lucas is cooking class, so you can cook. Um, he's having a cooking class competition. There's six teams. That's important. Okay, six teams. Each student brought supplies that will be shared equally among the teams. So it sounds like if it's going to be shared equally, whatever all the quantities are, what are we going to be dividing by? Six. Six. Okay. Um, the table shows the supplies Lucas brought. If the supplies are shared equally among the teams, how much of each supply will each team get? So, um, number seven, it says, do you need all the information above to solve the problem? I want somebody to answer number seven for me. Miss Adams, number seven. Do you need all, and when they say all the information above, I think they're talking about what's written and what's in that chart. What do you think? The price you don't need? Yeah, exactly. Do you need the answers? No. Um, the cost is not needed there you go number seven is answered yeah this doesn't matter that's not what they're asking all right uh describe how to solve the problem well so you guys can do that number nine write equations to represent how much each supply how much of each supply each team will get so um let's look at this very first supply it's it's two sacks two sacks of flour and each sack is 4.5 pounds okay that lb right there 
That means pounds. Okay? So my question is, and this is just the first amount we're looking at, Miss Jennings, so what's the total number of pounds of flour? Mm, well, mm, let's see here. Each sack is 4.5 pounds. How many sacks are there? Two. Okay. Nine. Thank you. Yeah, I think you were making it harder than it was. Yeah. So uh, nine pounds is the total um, total uh, weight of the flour. But what are we dividing it by? One of the first things we talked about. It's up there. Two? Mm-mm. Oh. What are we dividing by? Six? Yeah, six. Okay. So nine divided by six. Okay. Um, and that's just the first one. This one right here. You're going to have to do the other ones also. Okay, the rice and the ground turkey, all right? And then write the equations to represent how much of each supply each team will get. Well, I mean, so for the first one here, we could do, write the equation 4.5, okay? Uh, um, and I could write it like this, times 2 equals... And I could just put X, and then I could write it like, I suppose, um, X divided by um, 6, or X divided by 6 equals, and that would be the answer to the very first part, okay? All right, I think that's it. I'm going to let you guys uh, do the rest of these on your own.